I broke a guy's nose once. This happened about five years ago when I was 16 years old in the small town I lived in. I was walking to the dollar store from school one day to pick up some pens I needed for class. School had just let out and there was an appropriate amount of traffic, being the town that it was. I noticed there was a group of three men walking behind me. Normally, I don't think too much about things like this. It's common for people to walk around town because all of our buildings are very close together. Even if you're visiting, most of the restaurants are in walking distance. But these three obviously aren't from around here. I largely ignored them because quite frankly I was used to it. But then one of them started making some nasty comments about me. I honestly don't remember most of it, but I got shivers down my spine. These guys were nasty, talking about what they'd do to me. I kept walking and they kept getting louder. I didn't carry a cell phone at the time and although we were in broad daylight with plenty of people driving by, I felt very threatened. I was around 5 foot 3 and probably weighed about 130 pounds. These guys were much bigger than me and they were getting angry because I was ignoring them. I kept moving faster. I could see the store and a sense of relief washed over me. If I could get inside I could tell the store clerk what was happening and they could call the police. Then one of them yelled. You don't get to ignore me, bitch, and grabbed my shoulder hard and started to turn me toward him. On and off, I had taken around four years of training in Taekwondo. My last class had probably been the day before. This guy had put his hands on me and I was scared out of my mind. The punch was instinctive. As he spun me around... I used the force he gave me and caught him directly in the nose. I felt it shatter under my fist. Blood quite literally burst from his nose as I pulled away. He fell back screaming. I took one look at the other two, who were busy looking at their friend, and ran crying into the store. The cops were called, but the guys were gone. I still had blood on my hands when they got there. They said while they were impressed by my reaction, they told me I probably shouldn't be walking alone anymore, even in the daytime. I bought my freaking pens and went home. So, guy with the broken nose... Let's not meet ever again. The growling outside my door. Many years ago, I got my first bachelor apartment. It was a basement unit in a two-story walk-up on the edge of my town's campus, so naturally, it was an eclectic mix of wealth and poverty. I was somewhere closer to the latter. This place was tiny, with a mattress on the floor against one wall. I could lie on the floor, feet against the edge of the mattress, and touch the far wall with my fingertips so there wasn't much space. The kitchenette was to the right of the apartment door, and there was a tiny bathroom in the back. One night, at around 4 a.m., I heard growling, and because my apartment was so small, and I was so close to the apartment door, and because it was so dark, it sounded like the growling was inside my apartment. It sounded like there was an angry, 
hurt animal growling on the other side of my living room, and in the pitch black, that was truly terrifying. I lay there, under my blankets, terrified. The growling went on for almost 30 minutes and would get louder and more angry, then taper off a little, then louder and angrier and higher pitched, like a wail or a shriek, then stop. Finally, I heard this scratching on my door and the growling stopped. There was nobody in my apartment, never was. It was my next door neighbor and apparently she believed she was possessed. She did this a few more times. She would lie on the floor outside of my apartment door in the hallway, out of sight from my people so I couldn't see her. I could only hear her growling and speaking something that wasn't English and always well into the night. I had no phone and ours were the only apartments in the basement as the rest of it was for the furnace and the water heaters and storage. So when I wanted to go out, I had to pass her apartment, which started becoming a bad time. Every time I needed to leave home, it got to the point where I had to tiptoe past her door because if she heard me, she would rush to her front door and start banging on it, shrieking and cursing until I was far enough away that I could not hear her. I spoke to the landlord and he said that she was fine as far as his experiences with her were concerned. She was a lovely, quiet woman who mostly kept to herself. Of course, because we were the only tenants on that floor, nobody else heard what was going on, so it was her word against mine. About a month after speaking with the landlord about her, she set fire to her apartment cooking toast. She just put the bread on the burner and forgot about it and set a small fire. Nobody was badly hurt. The building was evacuated and she went to the hospital with smoke inhalation, but was released the next day. When they went in to assess the damage, they discovered that she had written on every square inch of her apartment walls in small, neatly written cursive handwriting, vaguely religious scripture style verses, apparently in an attempt to keep the demons contained. I moved out at the end of the month and never looked back. I heard through a friend that she was diagnosed with severe schizophrenic disorder and some other things and was put on a heavy course of medication to deal with it. To this day, I wouldn't know her if I passed her in the street. I never once saw the woman who became feral and lay growling and shrieking outside my door. I only heard her, and she scared the living crap out of me. He's wanted by the police. This took place a couple of years ago, but believe me when I tell you it's still relevant. A year ago, I met a guy at a bar. He called himself Joy. Ironic. I wasn't looking for anything serious, and apparently neither was he. We got along great and started hooking up until things started to get weird. He began being more intimate, telling me about his life and specifically about his ex-girlfriend that killed herself not even a year ago. I honestly felt bad for him and tried to comfort him, telling him it wasn't his fault. At some point I didn't really know when, we became exclusive. We weren't a proper couple, but we decided not to sleep with anyone else. Or so I thought. 
I found out he had been seeing other women and I was honestly pissed. For me, honesty is a very important thing and he seemed to be toying around with me. I set my mind and ended it with him, to which he didn't seem to care. Now I was kind of sad and angry at myself since I felt played with and I should have known better. That didn't last long though, since he kept texting me like usual, asking me to hang out as normal. I told him I wasn't interested and that I honestly didn't want to waste my time anymore. Then things got creepy. He accused me of seeing someone else, said I was dishonest and even called me names like slut and else. I wouldn't have it. I told him he was mental and that he should stay away from me. He threatened to kill himself. At this point it was beyond clear to me that he was either on drugs or mentally unbalanced. Either way, and because I have a history with suicide, I was really triggered by that. The thought of someone I know dying and me not doing anything about it wouldn't let me sleep, even if it was just blackmail. So I text one of his friends and tell him to just check on him. A couple of days passed and he called me saying he was sorry, that it had been a rough couple of weeks for him and that he really wanted to see me, at least just to talk. I naively accepted. We decided to meet up at a bar we used to go to and we mostly sat in silence. I was still kind of hurt and in no way was I planning on getting back with him. I guess I just wanted to know he was okay. The few words we exchanged were to order our drinks and some fries. It was almost as if he was ignoring me and I got tired pretty quick. I finished my beer, left my part of the money on the table and told him to have a good life. As I was leaving, even more pissed than before, I heard someone running behind me. Tired, I turned to face someone who was probably him and felt a cold shiver down my spine when I saw the look on his face. It was honestly like he was possessed. He caught up to me and shoved me to the wall with his hand on my throat. You're not going to leave me like that. He yelled, squeezing his hand. Now, never in my life had I been in a situation like this before, so the fear paralyzed me. But bless the waiter who ran after this maniac because he didn't pay off the rest of his bill. I guess he had some experience with troublemakers, because in a few seconds he had him locked down under his arm. I rested against the wall crying and coughing while the waiter called for help. I thanked him but he left for home immediately. I told my best friend what had happened and my fear turned to anger. I wanted to rip that guy apart, but I'm smarter than that. I'm 160 centimeters and I didn't exercise in any way. If someone was going to be ripped apart, it was me. So I let it pass, under the condition that if he contacted me again, I would find a way to end him. He never contacted me again. Why am I telling you this story now? Well, about two months ago I saw him. Not in person, but on TV. He's being accused of the murders of three girls who, according to the investigation, were his girlfriends at the time. He's being classified as a serial killer and the year he was inactive, between the last kill and the second to last kill, was the year we went out. I'm not afraid anymore. But I'm sad. 
I'm sad thousands of women, especially in my country, get killed every year and very few people take the time to find the responsible. Dear Joy, I'm not the insecure weak girl I was back then, so, for your sake, let's not meet again, or I'll make justice myself.